Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about how the Fed is actually helping the shorts and how for a long time none of us have really realised the true extent of how these reverse repos actually impact the shorts. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So this article from the ICMA group talks about the role reverse repos actually have in financial markets. Importantly, it says the repo market is pivotal to the efficient working of almost all financial markets. Importantly, one of the key use cases for these repos is to prevent market squeezes. So when the Fed talks about the repo market and the reverse repo market, they highlight some key use cases that obviously sound good on paper and obviously sound good to retail investors, like providing an efficient source of short-term funding, providing a more resilient money market, and providing a secure and flexible home for short-term investments. The Fed says that repos and reverse repos help facilitate central bank operations and they ensure liquidity in the secondary debt market. So when retail investors first see repos and reverse repos, they say, hang on, this sounds great. It effectively just bolsters the US financial system and helps with liquidity in the market, right? But some of the things the Fed doesn't touch on is how reverse repos help finance leverage investors, aka those over leveraged shorts, and also helps cover short investors as well, or protect those short investors. It says institutional investors, such as alternative investment funds, aka hedge funds, borrow cash in the repo market to fund leveraged investment strategies on a cost efficient basis. AK, these hedge funds can borrow cash on the cheap to help fund their leveraged investment strategies and also to allow them to take risky short positions. But again, the Fed says, don't worry, guys, these funds play an important key role in feeding market liquidity and driving price discovery. The Fed says, guys, if we didn't have these ridiculously over leveraged funds borrowing money on the cheap to take short positions, then we wouldn't be able to find fair price discovery. Reverse repos can also be helped to hide or to manipulate those failed to delivers and to effectively prevent true settlement failures. It says where an intermediary has sold securities to one party, which is purchased from another, but the inward delivery fails to arrive on time, or the shares can't actually be located, the intermediary can borrow those securities in the repo market to ensure that it can make timely delivery to the first party until such time as the secondary party delivers. AK, if one fund can't locate any shares to borrow, they can borrow those securities in the repo market to help avoid filing a fail to deliver. AK, the hedgies can use this repo market to avoid stocks appearing on that regulation SHO list and to avoid the fail to delivers having to be closed out. If there's no fail to delivers to close out because they've been hidden using the repo market, then effectively there's no FTDs that actually exist or there's no FTDs they actually have to file. AK, these hedgies don't have to file and report these FTDs if they can hide the FTDs in the first place by borrowing the shares in that repo market. Obviously, it says without the ability to borrow securities, delivery failures might propagate through the market, leading to disorderly conditions, which could interrupt trading and damage investor confidence. AK, instead of having to file a massive wave of FTDs, which could potentially cause the AMT squeeze, they can just borrow the shares in the repo market, and therefore they don't have to report those FTDs, and therefore they can avoid the AMT squeeze. And obviously, as I said earlier, these repos and reverse repos can be used to prevent market squeezes. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure to sign up to BlockFi using the link in the description below to get up to $250 in free Bitcoin. With BlockFi, you can trade tons of different cryptos like Mana or Decentraland, Sand or Sandbox. There's Matic, Doge, Solana and many others. And that's why more than 500,000 people and 350 institutions globally use BlockFi. It's also an entirely free platform that requires no minimum balance. BlockFi also offers a rewards credit card with an introductory rate of 3.5% cash back on your purchases. It is by allowing the borrowing of securities, repos help to prevent individual institutions squeezing the market in a particular security by cornering supply and thereby creating or exacerbating temporary imbalances between supply and demand. 
Okay, instead of a hedge fund or multiple hedge funds, shorting all of the AMC shares and shorting the float multiple times over, causing an imbalance between supply and demand, these hedges can just borrow additional shares in the repo market. And obviously, as we know, it says squeezes can lead to settlement failures and disorderly markets. Obviously, the Fed thinks it's better to not avoid the squeezes and not to avoid these short hedge funds shorting the float multiple times over, but instead to give them a tool to short the float multiple times over and just not have to report those FTDs or not have to corner the supply. Okay, instead of the Fed banning these over leveraged hedge funds or these over leveraged shorts, shorting the float multiple times over and creating synthetic shares, which can obviously lead to settlement failures, instead of making these funds report their settlement failures, they just allow them to borrow additional shares in the repo market. Now obviously it's frustrating the Fed actually helps the hedgies and it's frustrating the Fed isn't doing anything about the over leveraged shorts but I think really this reverse repo tracker just shows really how close we are to the AMC and GameStop squeeze. Originally, I thought this reverse repo data would be used to tell when the market was going to crash. Obviously, as the hedges are borrowing more and more and more money, it shows that a market crash is becoming ever more likely. It shows the hedges are running out of available margin, and it shows there's no decent places in the market to invest their money. And that's why they're entering the repo market and also the reverse repo market to lock up their money for a fairly small interest rate. These hedges are both borrowing additional money to ensure they can reach their margin requirements and also locking their money up overnight at a fairly low interest rate because the market is so risky at the moment. And that's why I thought that this figure had been increasing basically every single day over the last year. But I'm now coming to realise that this figure actually tells us just how close we are to the AMC and GameStop squeeze. These hedges are obviously having to borrow additional money and additional securities in the repo market and the overnight reverse repo market to ensure they can continue meeting their margin requirements and to ensure they can continue locating AMC shares or continue hiding those failed delivers. Obviously, these reverse repos really started ramping up in that first week of June and the last week of May when AMC ran up. And obviously, ever since then, it's been continue ramping up over the last year. And yesterday on Monday, we set a new all-time high of $2 trillion. These hedges have been borrowing more and more and more money every single day over the last few months. And it just goes to show that the AMC squeeze is approaching ever closer each and every day. It's got to the point now where hedges are having to borrow $2 trillion in cash and securities on a daily basis to avoid the AMC, GameStop and other meme stock squeezes. Now, I don't think this is solely $2 trillion in synthetic AMC shares or $2 trillion in AMC shares alone, but effectively $2 trillion in that entire meme stock basket to continue to avoid the squeeze. I don't know at what point this reverse repo market caps out or whether $2 trillion means we're only days away from the squeeze or whether it means we're weeks or months away, but I do know that $2 trillion is an awful lot of money to be borrowing on a daily basis to avoid the squeeze. But as Ashley Cat tweeted, starting June 1st, the Fed is actually going to start quantitative tightening. Now that involves a gradual reduction in the reverse repo numbers, but it won't have an effect on the market right away. She said obviously the reverse repo market allows funds to trade cash with liquidity that they can use to show as a hedge or liquidity for their positions in shorts and derivatives, thus maintaining margin requirements and avoiding margin calls. But by reducing the amount of reverse repos, it would be assumed that funds would eventually be unable to show they can cover their margin requirements or unable to hide those FTDs any longer, forcing them to make changes or face those margin calls. She says obviously they trade our cash for collateral because it's too great of a risk to hold our cash daily. They earn interest on a swap with the repos, but at some point when the market crashes, these funds that are short will go long with that cash. And previously when that reverse repo market has bugged and the reverse repos couldn't be posted, both GameStop and AMC ran 100% because obviously with no cash coming in, the shorts had nothing to hedge their positions with. And another sign the Fed actually helps these shorts is that they only advertise stocks to retail investors on mainstream media so hedge funds can escape their positions and leave retail holding the bag. 
Obviously, shorts are deep in their AMC short position, and they're constantly trying to get AMC retail investors to sell their shares via Jim Cramer talking about it on CNBC. And at the same time, whenever a stock is just about to release bad earnings, Jim Cramer tells us that that stock is definitely a buy and that it's definitely going to recover anytime soon. Obviously, some retail investors do take Jim Cramer's advice. They buy the stock and a few days later, the stock drops and retail is left holding the bag. And obviously, those hedgies sold the stock to the retail investors before the drop actually happened. And as Lightning Warrior tweeted, he said, my ongoing theory so far, the hedges have obviously manipulated the market and have received no regulation or no pushback from neither the SEC or the Fed. Obviously, they fear their current short position because it's so large, but they think they've got it figured out or appropriately hidden using those reverse repos. They've obviously either paid off or made deals such as those reverse repo deals to avoid margin calls so far. But as Lightning Warrior also says, soon it will all blow up on them because there's only so long they can continue utilising the reverse repo market. And obviously now that the Fed plans to start this quantitative tightening and reducing these reverse repos and the reverse repo market numbers, that margin call position will be approaching ever closer. So guys, be sure to leave a comment down below and ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.